Beastly Boar was worried as he looked at the rising Rainbow River. The water level was getting close to the bottom of the bridge. If it got any higher, the horrible hut he, his mate Sweet Treat Pig, Treat Heart Pig, and Messy Bear would be soon cut off from the rest of Carolot. A hoof landed on his shoulder. We will be all right, honey. The house is on high ground. Beastly turned and looked into the eyes of his mate. He put his arms around her best as best as he could. It was hard enough for him to put his arms around the plump big piggy when they first fell in love. Now her belly was swelled with burden of unborn piglets. Beastly lowered his right hoof and lovingly stroked her belly. I really worry about you. If anything were to happen to you, I couldn't go on living. I love you so much. Oh, Beastly. As Sweet Tree hugged her mate, she was careful not to knock him off of his hooves. His weak leg was shackled in a leg brace. Pilo may have been weak in his leg, but it didn't weaken his spirit. At times it was easy to forget the fun-loving Beastly had a disability. More than once, she had knocked him off of his hooves. Beastly would easily get back up and laugh saying, You knock me off my hooves. I guess I'm in love. As the happy couple went back inside the hut, the rain began to fall again. Meanwhile, Treat Heart and Messy Bear were finishing up shopping in Carolot. Treat Heart felt uneasy about the weather. It would be just like her sister would have to have babies on such a foul day. We better get on home, she said to Messy Bear. They clearly were nearly home, when they were turned back by a loyal heart dog. The bridge was closed, and the water was lapping over it. They would have to spend the night at his guests. Shrieky was enjoying the damp day. Uncle Noheart was at his magician's convention. He didn't want her to leave her alone. The always independent-minded teenager had convinced him that she was now old enough to take care of herself. There were times where she missed having Beastly around. It is to being tough being the human teenager. Shiki had to deal with being a teenager female wizard. With no parents or siblings, she had to get answers tough ones from her uncle or his mistress. Beastly had also tried to help her understand life. Life often got very strange for Shriki. She seemed to thrive on living on the odd life. Part of the odd life was having been raised by Beastly, the cursed wild boar with human traits and was like a stepbrother to her. Although she may have often irritated him, she was actually fond of him. They had gone on many life trials and errors together. She smiled to herself as she remembered how Mistress Blackheart tried to answer her questions about how boys and girls are different. Mistress Blackheart had let Shrieky help her charge with her twin niece and nephew's diapers. The next day, Shrieky could hear Beastly leap peeing in the bathroom. She tried to do some magic to see if she could make the bathroom door accidentally swing open. For once, her magic had worked. The door popped open, and poor Beastly had an accident all over the toilet as he flinched in surprise. His nose changed color in a blush. Shrinky apologizes for the intrusion of his privacy. She had a hard time not to laugh at his misfortune. She had now had a few answers to her life's questions. Beastly was really a boy. A boy who kept everything tucked in his pouch. Later that day, she bought Beastly an ice cream cone as a way of apologizing. Yes, she did have feelings for him. Even Shrieky could have a guilty coincidence. Shrieky sighed when her uncle had thrown Beastly out of the castle when she had a little thought of it. Life must go on. Now she found herself wondering how the little pest was doing. Oh well, time to fix up a snack. In the distance, she suddenly heard a strange sound. Sweet Treat had just left the bathroom when it happened. Her water broke. She suddenly felt the pains that signal that she, she would soon be a mama piggy. As she went to tell Beastly, she heard a loud crash. The Rainbow Wither had washed out the bridge, and they were now cut off from Carolot. In the opposite direction down the road loomed Noah's castle. It was the nearest inhabited structure, now accessible to the pig's family's home. Shrieky was just getting into a book, when a frantic knocking came out of the door. When she opened the door, she was shocked to see Beastly standing there. He had no jacket on and was soaked. What in the blazes are you doing here? Shrieky yelled. Beastly looked like as if he was going to cry. 
It's Sweet Treat. She's about to have her babies. The bridge is out and we need help. I don't know how to deliver babies. Well, neither do I, but as a girl, I guess I should help a girl in labor. Let's go. Despite his leg brace, Beastly quickly led Shrieky through the dark, gloomy night. Sweet Tree cried in disbelief and relief when Beastly and Shrieky rushed in. The thought of being alone and giving birth was terrifying to her. She knew neither Beastly nor Shrieky had any experience in delivering babies. Just a presence provided enough comfort. Shrieky felt a genuine sympathy for the plump so piggy. She suddenly thought of what it would be like if she were in labor. Her mind flashed back to the book on childbirth Mistress Blackheart had given her. A sudden feeling of maturity struck her. By golly, those pig piggies were going to be born alive and well. She would to see that. Get a pan of warm soapy water in here, beastly. Also find some towels. Sterilize some scissors. I may need to cut the umbilical cords. I'll get them right away, said Beastly. Beastly was amazed of how calm Shrieky seemed to be. She was calm in the storm. She was the bridge over troubled waters that could not give. She gave him hope and confidence. Together, they would help Sweet Treat deliver the new life into the world. Okay, Mama Piggy, Shrieky said to the panting Sweet Treat. Take some deep breaths. Whenever you feel a contraction start, push with your muscles. Okay. Thanks for the help. You're a true neighbor. Here comes the contraction now. Beastly walked into the room and laid out the towels onto the new equator changing table. In a glass of pair of scissors, Beastly then took Shriek Sweet Treat by the hoof. Well, honey, let's get started as a family. Shrieky could see a small set of hooves and a snout emerge from the soap's birth canal. She braced herself as she waited for another contraction course its way through the soap body. Okay, give it your all. Suddenly there was a little squeal. Beastly's eyes went wide and teary as Shrieky set the newborn piggy on one of the towels. What are boy and girl piggies called? Beastly's voice was quivering and said, A boy is called a boar and a girl is called a snow. Before Shrieky could say anything else, Piglet number two entered the world. Like his sister before him, he let out a little squeal to announce his entry in the world. After the third and last one was being wiped dry, Shrieky then turned to Beastly. Well, you guys have a sow, a boar, and a sow. Congratulations. From the sound of things, I think they'll be fine. The free little piggies lay on the bundled on the table. Shrieky tenderly took them to their mother, as their mom and dad took turns holding them. Shrieky watched with a sense of pride. She had helped deliver free babies. Maybe she wasn't such a bad girl after all. Shrieky said and Beastly carried the little piglets to their free cribs. Shrieky had calmly disposed the afterbirth. Sweet Tree was given a quick sponge bath. Okay, Mommy, get some rest, Shrieky said. Sweet Treat smiled. Okay, but you two also took a look like you could use a nap. Shrieky then walked to the couch and flopped down. She was emotionally and physically exhausted but she felt so elastic as Beastly threw a blanket over her and said, Thanks, Shrieky. You're really like a family to me. Shrieky smiled. One thing I could say about you is that you always made my life so interesting. She soon dozed off into pleasant dreams. A storm may rage outside, but inside the hut there was a family of a scene of peace of quant and quantility. As the morning dawned, the care power team arrived to wash out the cutout bridge. Treatheart and Messy Bear watched in anxiety as the platoon bridge was erected. The river was still running out high, but it was everyone's relief temporarily the bridge held. There was an anxious moment after Funshine knocked down the door. As the door opened, Funshine was shocked to see Beastly holding a piglet. Is everyone all right in there? asked Funshine. Beastly was all in smiles. We're all fine. This little guy here is Pepper Jack. Come in and close the door. Funshine signaled for the others to follow him as, as the care power team members, Messy Bear, Treat Heart Pig, entered with her in for a surprise. Sweet Treat was sitting up in a bed with a little piggy sucking on her. They were surprised to see Shrieky at the changing table. She was trying her best to get a diaper on a wiggly piglet. Treatheart was speechless 
Messy Bear could only blurt out, You had your babies? Sweet Tree was beaming. Yeah, I sure did. You've met our little boar, Pepper Jack. This little snow getting a drink is candy. The little squirmer getting a change help is our other snow, Taffy. Don't be alarmed about Shrieky being here. She helped deliver the babies. She's an awesome midwife. We could have been lost without her help. Funshy looked at Cheer. You stay here and check on the newborns. We'll go take Care Bear, the dog, and give him a frugal checkup. She'll never believe this story. Shrieky, please stay until we get back. I'm sure the doc would want to talk to you. Cheer Bear, Bear quickly scribbled something on a notepad. Give this to Tenderheart before you come back. Also show it to the doctor. Sure thing, said Funshine, as he and, and, and the Care Power team left. As Cheer examined the babies, she couldn't help, help but to ooh and awe. She saw that Shrieky started to look a bit uneasy. You did a great job, Shrieky. You've grown up a lot. I hope your uncle can appreciate that you did. Shrieky snuffled her feet. I hope so, too. I don't know, know how he's going to be feeling knowing that I helped a care cousin. No matter what happens, it was worth it. Seeing a baby get born gives a little more whole appreciation of life. I used to think that I was never would never want to get pregnant. Now I do hope for a chance to be a mother someday. You will make a good mom, Shrieky, Beastly said. You were fun to grow up with, even though sometimes you got mad at me and always find something fun to do. We may be different species, but you're like a stepsister to me. Don't worry about your uncle. He may have kicked me out of the castle, but he can never kick you out of my heart. You helped a mother who needed help. Even no heart could appreciate that. There was a knock on the door. Treat hard and let fun shine and take bear in. In take care had her doctor's bag. Funshine had a package as the doctor examined the piglets. The little squeals and grunts could be heard. You did as well as a professional midwife, Shrieky. Cheers notes that you deserve some honors. She took the package from Funshine. Here's a certificate, and now you're an honorary midwife. You should consider a career in the medical field. Thanks, Shrieky said. I think I've had enough of the medical profession. I must say this has been an enlightening experience. Thanks for the good words you put yourself off in the note, Cheer. You deserve a lot for what you did, Cheer said, as she handed Taffy to her mother. Shrieky then walked up to the bed. Taffy immediately latched on her mother to get some milk. I have to get home now, Sweet Treat. I wish you and the babies best of luck. Sweet Treat was beaming with joy as she fed Taffy. As she looked up at Shrieky, there was gleam in her eyes. Thank you for everything you did, Shrieky. You helped deliver the greatest gifts I ever got. Beastly and I have something to give to you before you leave. Beastly handed her a large envelope. There is a thank you card with a picture of the babies with me and Sweet Treat. You helped make us a family, and you have always been like a family to me. Shrieky gave Beastly a hug. I hate to admit it, but you've always been like a brother to me. Me, don't you two? I mean, you five, be strangers. I'll keep in touch with you. Shrieky handed it home with some large envelope and the package tucked securely under her arm. Later on that day, she heard her uncle arrive at the door. As she let him in, she asked, How was the convention? Boring, he replied. I see you made it through the night. How did everything go? Shrieky handed him the package. You won't believe what the night I had, she exclaimed. As she looked at the honorary midwife certificate, she had given them details for the incredible ordeal. I hope you aren't too mad at me for helping them, she said at the end of her story. I just couldn't say no to an expectant mother who needs help, even if she is a care cousin. No hard did something out of character, he chuckled. <laughs> babies are babies. It doesn't matter if they're human, animal, care bear, or care cousin. You did the right thing, and I'm very proud of you. You're like a daughter to me. If I had a heart, I'd give you a hug. As he handed the certificate back to her and he chuckled again. <laughs> Delivering babies, I think my bad girl's gonna go good. Shrieky laughed. <laughs> no heart. You always just know what to say. Well, and that, my little pretties, was My Bad Girl's Gonna Go Good. A Care Bears fan fiction written by Taggart Cher. Uh, my final thoughts on the story. I gotta say, I really like this story. So, 
Well, basically, I can honestly see this being a continuation of Care Bears, you know, where, um, you know, Beastly Lee, um, you know, gets a wife and he has like a family. And I mean, I think this one was pretty cute. I did find this one to be really cute, too. I mean, I do like how well made this story is. I mean, this is like, I believe this was written, yeah, 2012. And I mean, I discovered this story back in 2015 or something. I don't remember what month it was, but it was somewhere around 2015. And yeah, I I could definitely say I can honestly see Shrieky doing this. if, Even though it's uncharacteristic of her to do it, I can honestly see her in this situation or something. I can honestly see her, you know, in this situation if it were to happen to Care Bears. And yeah, I mean, I haven't watched Care Bears in like years. Like if you watch the ones in the 90s, well, 80s, because, you know, the Care Bears came out in the 80s, which the one was Shrieky. I mean, I used to watch that as a kid. And this one brings me back memories of watching, you know, Care Bears when I when it was on TV when I was a kid. So, yeah, I definitely have to say um, I did spot maybe a few grammatical errors, but it's not too many of them, but there were just a few of them in the story. So just wanted to point that out. But other than that, I find it to be pretty good. I honestly like the concept. It, I can honestly picture this being, you know, the actual case if, you know, if Shrieky was in this situation with Beastly and his, um, well, well, his mate. I honestly thought the piggies names were cute. You know, Candy, Taffy, and Pepper Jack. Yeah. That's, those are really cute names. I really like it. So, um, yeah, there's nothing bad I didn't like about this story. There's nothing I don't see that I don't care for. I mean, the grammar was good as well as the sentence structuring. I honestly could picture this being the case. Even though we know Shrieky, you know, is always the bad girl and she likes to scream whenever something goes wrong. Yeah. I mean, if you've watched this show as a kid, you probably understand where I'm coming from. Because we all know Shrieky likes to scream quite a lot. <laughs> I mean, I, I find it annoying that she does scream. But I find it funny me that she does scream as well at times. But other than that, pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, I honestly could picture Care Bears making maybe an episode of this. But, you know, they would have to make it kid-friendly, basically. Like, with the childbirth and that. I mean, I know some TV shows manage to sneak in childbirths and births and get away with it. Like, if you remember that episode in 16 where Jen's mom has the baby, they managed to do that, you know, pretty well. As well as um, Flintstone's Holly Rockabye Baby. I mean, I'm surprised some of the cartoons, you know, kids' cartoons were able to get away with giving birth and that. I mean, they managed to do it in a way where kids would understand. And even younger birth people will understand the idea. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is on fanfiction.net, and I want to thank um, Tiger Chair for giving me the opportunity to read this story, and I do, uh, do thank them for giving me permission to read them, this story. Now, I do plan to read maybe another of their stories if I find any with Shrieky in them that I like, and yeah, I'm considering reading more of them with Shrieky, but I'll have to take a look at them because... I remember been following this offer, I guess, since 2015. But that was way before I started um, Creepypastas and started becoming a narrator. So, anyways, I thought this was cute. I mean, it was sweet. I really do appreciate the story being pretty good and the concept. So, with that being said, um, yeah, like I'm going to say now, this is just simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's perfectly fine, too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these stories, and this is my own first personal thoughts. I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10. It was sweet. It was pretty enjoyable, and I honestly really like the fact that, you know, uh, Shrieky was acting out, out of character. Now, normally that would be a problem, but it's not a problem because since Shrieky's in this situation, you know, she doesn't have anything better to do, do about, you know, yelling and screaming or being angry or something. Because normally in a situation, something like that, she would normally do that. But she was so calm throughout the whole thing, which I can honestly see Shrieky if she doing that, if she was in this situation. So with that being said, um, yeah. What did you guys personally think of this story? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done personally helped make this story a lot better. 
Feel free to leave me what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you're new to my channel, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload. So that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.